Do you see how you frustrating that is? You've with these people talking to you about it. You're just ignoring that. What, are, is this about no comment, Chick? Is that... Hey everybody, no comment chick here, and I've got a very spicy debate for you today between Ninetales Congressman Fox and Dylan Burns. What I'm wondering is, did Ninetales manage to do the thing that both myself and Keffels failed to do? Remember, I took on Dylan Burns in WrestleBrainia, Keffels took on Dylan Burns, as well as the rest of the debate bros before waving the white flag and saying, if you can't beat him, join him. It looks like Ninetales kind of stood up to Dylan Burns and did not back down. I would love to know, though, what you think about this in the comments, so let me know that, and make sure to stick around to the very end because I do get mentioned in this. This is going to be a two-part video series. Yeah, you're going to have another video coming out after that. So as always, like and subscribe. Let's get going. A lot of trans streamers have turned their back on Dylan Burns, right? So Ninetales is talking about maybe the reticence that um, the Hippy Dippy has had in the past. And this isn't just the Hippy Dippy. I don't want to I don't want to paint with too broad of a brush. Everybody knows I got problems with Dylan, but this isn't about that. And I will say that Dylan's program, as I pointed out in that famous debate, it's not the only program with problems. Prime Kai's uh, program, you know, like when I went on there, I got I got shut up. I got told to hush, even though I talked substantially less than any of the other, um, you know, which I, I think I was on there with with just cis dudes, right? Um, yeah, there's not a lot of trans people platformed. And uh, when they are, they're not treated very well. And that's not just in Dylan's um, panel. Right. In fact, it's some of the reason that I reached out to Dylan was because I thought that his uh, panel maybe was like a touch better because I, I mean, after having talked to Prime about it, I got the sense that Prime was just unconcerned. I thought maybe Dylan would be concerned. Um, and really what I was talking about with Dylan wasn't so much like in platforming um, trans people, which, you know, I did see him get better on. Um, now, he's platformed less trans people, and I think that has a lot to do with the uh, bonds of trust that he's broken with some of those tra trans creators by attacking them, right? He's done this again and again, to the point where a lot of people just won't come on stream with him, um, my myself included. So yeah, I said everything I had to say um, on, on that day, right? And if he didn't get it, that's his problem. And that's his audience's problem, right? Okay, well then, I, if I've disagreed with it at the time, then I probably have valid reason. I probably agree with myself. I do gotta point out that you did disagree with yourself when you talked to Xander Hall. You admitted, maybe without realizing it, that I was right. Dylan, in that moment, when you said that there was a problem with platforming bigots when you let them gish gallop, you agreed to my point. Now, maybe you didn't do a good job listening to that point. Maybe you didn't even know that's what we were talking about. Maybe you tried to change the subject to a million different things, including demon mama's pronouns and your ex's pronouns and a whole bunch of other things in order to obfuscate and maybe you abuse the power of your megaphone in order to silence me Dylan but you did admit that I was right all right so let's get that straight Dylan apology accepted <laughs> you said I was right I'm sorry I'm sorry you can't take that back you can't take that back now yo as long as I can find some trans people that are willing to kiss my ass that are willing to tell me no no Dylan you did nothing wrong as long as I can find some assimilationists to bring on here not subtweeting anyone there right um i'm golden i'm golden i'm okay right you're not the only one who does this dylan you're not the only one who does this right and i i want to make sure that everybody understands that in my criticism of dylan i never meant to imply that dylan is the worst actor in this um regard you know he he's um I think that he's given into a lot of the perverse incentives that we talk about. I think he's found himself intellectually captured by the conservative ecosystem that he helped create. But I wouldn't say that you're the worst. Not by a long shot. I, th I think you're just a debate bro. Like, in, like in, you're just another debate pervert, Dylan, as, as somebody wise once said. So chat, to take us back to like my debate with Dylan, he, um, you know, he had done um, a hippy dippy, right? Um, and he'd had Rob Nor on, and Rob Nor um, was being really transphobic. Not just being transphobic, he was spreading transphobic tropes, and he wasn't just spreading one or two, he was gish galloping. So it was like rapid fire, machine gun, out into Dylan's crowd. 
Dylan's crowd are a bunch of naive liberals that don't know any better. So if they hear those brain worms, they don't realize there's a worm crawling in their ear and making a little home in there, right? Until it's too late. I, I was trying to warn Dylan about that, right? Um, so Dylan had gone and done the rounds because I was not the only one who had criticism for Dylan over this. As I recall, Chud Logic, Kevin Logan, some of the same people that absolutely turned their back on me for clout, right? For Dylan's approval, right? They, they voiced concerns. I don't think that they voiced the right concerns and I don't think that they voiced all the concerns, but they did voice concerns. So Dylan was going on a tour where he would go and talk to these people, uh, fail to listen to them and, and just like declare victory, right? And they rolled over for him. Um, I believe it's Pisco. Not that I haven't mispronounced his name too, but I think I've been corrected as Pisco. People, you've had Pisco on so much, Dylan. Okay. Anyway, that's not about. It's not about pronunciation. We get a criticism all the time. Like we don't bring on enough experts. So we wanted to bring on people who actually like no legal stuff i mean like the problem isn't just that you you know you don't bring on like representation um sometimes that representation yeah represents like expertise right and what we see with you and not just you dylan okay it's a lot of debate bros right is not just ignorance but we see willful ignorance we see arrogant ignorance right and that's what pisses people off that's what pissed my community off that that's why Dylan I don't know if you know this okay but I wasn't planning on taking you on I knew the danger in taking you on I knew that you were fragile and I knew how people like you generally re react when you're called out on something like that I only did it because my community, looking at myself from the position of a community member, I didn't know how I would respect myself if I didn't. If I had you on and I performatively said, well, what about this, this, and this, and at the end I rolled over for you like everybody else did, I don't respect that person. And I wanted to be somebody that I respected. And for me, that was worth it. That was worth all the harassment that you put me through, right? That was worth all that garbage. If I hadn't made the decision that I did, Dylan, right now I'd be wanting to kick, I'd be wanting to kick my own ass, okay? For that. And so um, there's not uh, a lot of black lawyers in the space. Uh, there isn't oh, lecture uh, like fan? a lot of yeah, I don't people know. of color who are lawyers in the space and that's bad. I wish that was different, but that isn't the state of the space. And you like retweeted it and you said like, Wonder how many colored and trans streamers they skip to wind up with four white uh, lamenters. The fake leftism show must go on. Um, I guess like for me, like, should I have like, like who should I have brought up in, in, in place of like the lawyers in our space who are, who are predominantly white? Well, I don't actually criticize you for bringing on experts. I, I appreciate that. And if they are experts, then the, my left-right dichotomy does fall apart. However, my general criticism, and again, like I said, I was all over the place and I was probably responding a bit too quickly at first, but my overall problem is that if you're going to be asking for experts on SCOTUS, and that seems like a valid way to gatekeep, then what about experts on trans issues? Um, I th I will let anybody discuss SCOTUS as I just wanted to make a special show where we brought on lawyers specifically for SCOTUS um, because I wanted to because the difference between like uh, being a lawyer and not being a lawyer is there's like a huge like wealth of knowledge about like legal terms and legal debate that I feel like non lawyers are not privy to. I mean, I get what you're saying, and I'm not gonna totally disagree with you here. I will say that um, I do know some people that, like, while they may not be lawyers, they they they're equivalent or or better in terms of their knowledge of the law, right? There's a lot of people that work in the legal system that we don't really give credit to, right? Um, just because they're not getting paid uh, the big bucks, they don't, you know, have the glorified jobs, right? So, I mean, but anyway, that's you know when it comes to certain terms that lawyers might use. don't like the use of colored uh, but is valid criticism that he favors white people true in their arguments good point um that isn't like known by most people in our space that makes the argument more interesting because i think people can like 
be taught through the legalese. But I only am gonna do like a one special edition for this. I have had people discuss the SCOTUS stuff who are not lawyers, just with like, no legal experience whatsoever, but they do their own research and come to their own opinion. This is more of like a unique show in the way that I want it to specifically be like dominated by lawyers, right? People who are lawyers and have experiences that. But there's not all only gonna be lawyers there because we just don't, there's just not enough lawyers in the space. Just like any time, like let's say we're gonna have an issue, like it's a trans issue, we're gonna have people who are trans activists or involved, like Josie Rose, for example, who's been involved in trans legislation and trans activists for a while. Riley Grace Roshong, uh, I've brought on before in the past, who's been involved in trans activism. In yeah, Riley Grace Roshong, who you went on to shit talk me with, right? Because you're so fucking fragile. My state, uh, I've done a really good work in my state as well. I'm just, just going to point out that from a truly leftist perspective, her trans ally, Riley's, and I, I try not to name names, but you did anyways. Uh, yeah. Riley's allyship is limited, and I'm not saying she shouldn't be brought on, but like again, yeah. we have to realize that when it's only on average one. Well, li listen, he's looking for the most tr convenient trans advocate, and that's what you notice with Vosh, and that's what you notice with Xander Hall as well. So, Dylan, I'm not lighting you up like specially. Like, I don't have a fuck it. Like I said, like water under the bridge. I, I think I can be realistic about where you 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 know are doing good things and and where you're falling down, right? And I, I don't think that you're like the worst. I think that you're just, you know, average. You're, you're mids, you know, for the debate bros, unfortunately, right? And we're subjected to the effects of all of your platforms, right? We're subjected to the fact that you all are preferentially treated in this sphere. We are subjected to the fact that you all, uh, you know, succeed largely due to your privilege and, and that there's no attempt made to correct for the lack of um cultural competency standpoint perspective right i mean like just because you have privilege doesn't make you a bad person i'll be the first to admit that right it's what you do with that privilege right then there's a degree he needs to balance trans people existing with some kind of opposition for the blood sport he can find trans people who hold different views instead of cis people who are oblivious to on most trans issues to which that one side can overpower the other, right? I mean, there is a degree. I would say that in most situations, the left perform very well in the show, and I get to set the terms of debate when it comes to you will not misgender, you will not uh, misgender people, you will not attack people's immutable characteristics, which is rule set in place that no other debate show on the platform even has. I, I mean, and in the end, though, I, a lot of trans well, people let me, on. If, if, I, if I just really quickly, though, because when we talk mm -hmm. about immutable characteristics, that's fine within the panel space. But how. Mm -hmm. like, as far as like stuff against trans people being normalized, it's I mean, Dylan, you gotta admit that there was another panel that did that before you blackballed me. Okay, seems to a lot of these debate bros seem to just be intent on eliminated in comp competition so that they look better in comparison, right? It's mirror mirror on the wall, like just like. So chat, I gotta I gotta point out that last year I had arguments with Dylan's fans when I said Dylan's not a leftist. That was a spicy take. That was seen as incendiary. That was seen as as, as me, you know, hitting below the belt. They they could not accept the fact that Dylan was not a leftist. There he is, he said it. Do you believe me now? straight from the horse's mouth. Dude is not a leftist, right? I, I don't really think he was ever really pretending to be. The Dylan, like, this is bad for leftism. Like, the idea of, like, socialism, Marxism, uh, anarcho-communism, Maoism, like, I just don't care because all, I'm not a socialist. All these wacky ideas of self of people actually, you know, controlling their their self-determination, controlling their lives, controlling um, the, you know, the, the work that is done to support that life, right? The idea that this should be um, up to the people themselves and should be um, taken away from those with hierarchical positions. That's just that's just wild, just wild to Dylan. Socialist. Um, I would consider myself left wing in the American sense as maybe you could say social democrat. There's a socialist tradition, but uh, my my uh, main interest here isn't to advance socialism when I do my well, show. Could you elaborate uh, on what your main interests with the show are? Because I think my main interest with the show is I think uh, one, 
uh, I want it to be entertaining. I want it to be an entertaining show. I think if you're, we're on Twitch, we need to make politics entertaining because this is a video game platform. And if we make it like a classroom or if we make it boring, nobody's going to watch. If you look at all the top streamers in the space politically, none of them are educational. Like we're going to sit down and read a book about like the future of anarcho-communism and the post-polarity world of Maoist. Like nobody's going to, nobody watches that. And it's because, not because that content isn't at all useful, right? Uh, maybe if you're a Maoist, it isn't useful. Um, but it's because Center right liberal. this yeah. is a video game space. We are already kind of living here almost on borrowed time for the fact that we're not even supposed to be here. And since we've made a community here, we need to make it entertaining if we're going to make anyone outside of just complete political nerds pay attention to us. Um, I also do want people to get some education out of it. I do think my show does convince some people, maybe not a ton, but I have gotten emails from people who have been convinced. And I also want to make sure that if debates are happening on Twitch, that we can set the terms to some degree, making sure that like misgendering will be banned and that you cannot attack people's mutable characteristics. And we have some level of order because all of the other like debate shows didn't have these rules set in place beforehand. And so having these structures where we can set the like standard for like, this is the type of behavior that isn't allowed period, I think is good. It's a, it, well, I mean, it, it can only be a start. Um, I'm not asking you to be a leftist. That's just to be super clear. I think you get a lot of credit for being a- In fact, I will give you some credit right here, Dylan, that there's a lot of people claiming to be leftists that aren't. And I'm glad you're willing to admit that that's not what you're doing here. You're not trying to grift on the perception that you're doing praxis. So, you know, good on you. Good on you, because you're definitely not doing praxis. Trans ally, which is what I'm addressing with the usage of your mm -hmm. space here. It's very- it's not completely useless, and it's very much uh, symbolically valid to be a trans ally in a way that is meaningful to you. But we also, like, if we're going to be asking ourselves, well, who are tr real trans allies? It's the people who aren't just in it for optics, aren't just in it in ways that only suit them. And most importantly, it's the ways in which people will not perpetuate the violence against trans people with the things that they do. And, and I understand the need to grow like that, to, to appeal to entertainment. I certainly have not tried to do that, and I'm not uh, a streamer in that sense. I'm just strictly a debater. Uh, so I, I probably didn't qualify for the video, and I'm willing to accept that. I'm not even doing panels anymore, so it's nothing. It's not like I'm trying to reclaim a spot I never had. Um, what, what my problem is, though, is that when it's just about entertainment, then the actual, like, not every trans issue is black and white or entertaining. In fact, a lot of them are very not entertaining and going through them can be pretty tedious because we're if, if you're going to get into it, like it's, it's not convenient. And when it comes to advocating for ourselves, like, yeah, there are people who can make it snappy and quick, but not actually advocate for the entire issue. But like we don't have the luxury of being entertaining when we're advocating for ourselves, really. Like, that, that's probably a special skill that somebody can, like, master, but I'm pretty neurodivergent myself, so it's, it's beyond my sense of comprehension. I'm just being me at this point. And my biggest problem is that when it's easier to, like, in one of my other posts, I said, I guess if you're trans and you want to be on the hippy dippy, you might as well pretend to be a fascist. It, there is, like, without any reward for merit here, and without any recognition of who's actually winning the conversation, it allows both sides to pretend like they're winning the conversation perpetually. Now, I don't know if you know who knew this, but trans people are the statistical minority as well. So if we're, if we're trying to say, like, our points are valid, above all the other people who are, first of all, re referring to normativity, but secondly, also screaming that their points are valid. Who do you think that the people in between are going to hear? Especially on places like Twitter and stuff like that. So I think I think it's valid for people to question if you're a trans ally when your space isn't actually conducive to discussions about trans issues that truly advocate for our needs. I guess, um, I guess primarily I don't view I, I guess there's a, there's a few things I want to say here. The first thing would be, I do believe the type of argument you make comes into effect when people are like deciding if you made a good argument or not. I don't think it's just simply like, 
hey, like this person was yelling and say they were right. This person was yelling and said they were right. So they most both have valid points. They're, if you, like everybody thinks they're right, but certain people get humiliated on my show, absolutely humiliated. Um, uh, they can do very well in debate and they can have good rhetoric or somebody can, can get like absolutely blown out because they didn't know what they didn't really think about what they were saying so i don't think it's as simple as well they both think they're right so they're gonna people are just gonna automatically side with the person who's who's appealing to like i'm, uh, I'm not no. even talking about on the panel i'm saying that when you constantly have the same debate over and over again it allows these people to give the performance as a whole that it's never changed and i want to point out too a lot of the leftists, mm -hmm. a lot of the uh, leftists and trans streamers who make it on are already kind of amplified. Whereas mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of smaller uh, far right, uh, far right people make it on. Which, and the difference between this is something called post amplification and pre amplification. Uh, post amplification means that you're already amplifying. Well, I guess I just explained that. So, the the key thing is though that. There are many, many small trans streamers who need amplification. And if anything, you should be reaching out more and trying really, really hard to find reasons for them to make the cuts. Because the, the reason I got, and I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to get into it because it's not about me, is that I just, quote, didn't make the cut. Now, that's possible, but when the argument is like, oh, well, we already have people. Okay, so I want to head something off at the past because I know that a lot of Dylan's audience that watch this, when they hear Ninetales say that, what they're hearing is Ninetales saying, listen, I know that I didn't score as many points as the people who were brought on, but you should give me a few extra points, like, right? So to you, I want to remind you something because Dylan's audience, you're really forgetful. You're really oblivious sometimes, okay? Really, really painfully oblivious, right? And what you're ignoring now is the fact that this is a subjective measure. Nobody scores points, you know, this isn't like a, you know, this isn't like a, you know, how much like, you know, corn did you like, you know, harvest or I don't know what kind of like objective measure you could have, right? This isn't like a, uh, this isn't objective, this is subjective, right? So we're having a subjective like measurement of like, you know, who does the best, right? And it's coming from somebody that is probably gonna be biased unconsciously and not i'm not talking about biases and like evil transphobia right i'm saying like just without even realizing it they're gonna skew away from trans people so i think what nine tails is arguing rather than like for some kind of like handicap for trans people or something like that some kind of like you know extra points you know for like representation what nine tails is actually asking for is for dylan to unskew those results because they are skewed against us right well uh my argument is it's good, but it's not diverse enough. It's certainly, okay. like, like I said, some of them, like some of them, fall short of like advocating for trans issues that actually would prevent more violence against. So, them. some people can advocate for trans issues that might prevent more violence. Or do like advocate for the best stuff, but just be shit at it. Yeah, uh, that happens all the time. But the hard Every, work is really every, humanizing. Well, you somebody. didn't. You. I'll let you finish. Sorry. Um, it, the hard work is really humanizing someone. It's hard to humanize somebody when they sound like a I want to point something out here. Like, Dylan got interrupted. That's true. I feel like his, like that weird little pregnant pause there. I don't think that a cis streamer is going to get that from Dylan, right? Y'all interrupt each other all the fucking time. You never seem to notice until it's us interrupting you and then you look weird at us like what are you fucking doing like what are we worth less than you is that what it is we're like beneath you we can't you know you you interrupt each other all the fucking time but when we do it you looked at us with contempt that's fucked up a dumbass and i, and I run into this up. issue a lot because i feel like a lot of people like come onto the show thinking that like they like have all these ideas in their head and they like mapped it out in their head and they know why they're right and like they think that they can get on the debate show and they're going to be the person who says like the revolutionary thing that convinces everybody or they got it all mapped out and then they come on the show kippy dippy recruitment this is the reason we have it 
and they end up saying the same thing everybody else is saying, or they don't say it in a convincing nature, they don't make the argument well, or they are not able to drag people in to make them listen to them, or or they just kind of choke. There could be a million reasons why somebody doesn't make it from the hippy dippy recruitment onto hippy dippy. 90% of the people who go on hippy dippy recruitment don't end up making it on the hippy dippy roundtable. Now, when it comes to this, uh, so I, I would say that like, when it comes to it not being diverse enough, on average, when it comes to uh, being on our like show, if you're trans, we have a higher percentage of trans people on our show than there are in the general population. Um, most larger trans streamers in their space have been on our show. And for the smaller trans streamers who haven't, uh, we have hosted trans streamers before. And for, in fact, we just hosted a trans masculine streamer. I think it was the last episode. Um, who is a very small streamer. You don't say! Um, for the ones who don't come on, I mean, we don't just look at the fact if somebody's trans or not. We also look at their just general, like, whether we think they're doing well or not in the recruitment show. And if they don't do well, we don't bring them on. Uh, because the worst thing we could do, in my opinion, um, when it comes to hosting trans voices, is hosting someone solely because they're trans. Just saying, you know what we need to do? We're going to. There it is. There's the argument that I was warning you about, uh, you know, that, that that I knew was percolating in Dylan's audience's brains, right? It apparently was also percolating in, in Dylan's uh, brain itself. Pick a transport voice out of the crowd so we can get permission to have a conversation here, because we know that if we don't have a trans person on, we're going to get a lot of heat. So we're just going to take whatever trans person we can find, have them on the show, so we look like we're being inclusive and progressive. I don't want to be like that. I want to make sure that if I do have a trans person on my show, that they're good at making an argument, they're good at advocating for whatever they believe, and they show a perspective that can drag people in, right? That's going to be what, like a lot of my main interests, right? So, so from an like optics angle, Geek. Wait, was Geek coming in? Mr. Geek, that's Mr. Geek. So this is Mr. Geek who likes to uh, portray me in a somewhat creepy manner on his thumbnails. I'm not sure exactly why. I think it is possible that it is from his fingers being slippery with the poutine, which he eats every day being a Quebecois man himself. And uh, he will most uh, certainly call me racist while talking about his, uh, his Quebecois derivation. Uh, the... Sorry, chat. I gotta give Mr. Geek shit. I gotta give Mr. Geek some shit, okay? He put me on a thumbnail saying, is blackface wrong? Oh, thanks, Mr. Geek. I'm never gonna let you live that down, okay? I'm never gonna let you live that down. They're talking about recruitment and the process of recruitment. But I know you enjoyed finding just the right picture of me for that thumbnail. It's very, très important. Like it's something huh? that like, huh? uh, like we have like a Discord set up like for this. Like um, we got a channel in the Discord uh, of Dylan. Danabo got also a channel for recruitment, and basically we just spread the word out through like. The Some French person's gonna see this and think I hate French people. L listen, I, I'm a francophile, okay? I'm a, I'm a francophile. I'm a friend. So that's not really like. We don't reach out to people, but after that, if you have names, uh, I would be happy to, you know, like feel free to send them to Danabo. He's the one in charge of this. Anyway, sorry. Sure, I, I have at least someone I can think of, even though I don't agree with all their politics. It's, it's not necessarily about that to me. I, I, I think when it comes to having the same discussion over and over again, and then having a lot of the same streamers because they're bigger, there, there is an issue here, and when you say particularly it's hard to humanize someone when they sound like a dumbass, well, that's kind of actually the luxury that reactionaries have, because A, their positions are already stronger because they're referring to normativity, which are more popular by default. Fighting for trans rights is opposing normativity, which, when you're talking about like confronting neoliberalism, puts us like at the disadvantage rhetorically. And statistically speaking, uh, we're way more dehumanized than reactionaries. Like, in leftist spaces, they're pretty dehumanized. But in the not leftist spaces that you say you're a part of, uh, or you constitute a part of, I should say. May we? Uh, that's actually not May we, common. chat? Uh, May we? In fact, it's more common to give them credit where they don't deserve it. But, and using, uh, and, and the reason they think it, it deserves credit is because they don't actually have- Dylan, how many times have you had a guy named Big Papa Fash on? Seriously, dude. Seriously. The experiences of the people they're trying to defend almost as like a counter reactionaryism. And this is what I mean by fake trans allyship, is that you can't just say that you're pro-trans and, and because you think that uh, 
trans hoes are bad. You have to say you're pro-trans because you think that they deserve to be humanized. And I don't think your space is actually humanized. Ici, on parle français. I think, I, I do think it does humanize trans people. I, I just disagree with that. Um, when no, it, I, when... I, I, but what I'm saying is... Vous avez l'internet maintenant? Oh. Is I don't what? think it pulls them up enough. It pulls them up enough. Um, so what you're asking for is for me to just platform more smaller trans voices, basically, right? Well, and I would say I will do that if that. they're if they're good at debate. I'll I'll, sure. I'll platform them. But I, I mean, when it comes to this idea that like uh, the conservatives on my show get the like early advantage because they're appealing for normative ethics or like norm no, like normative ethics, like, no, just, just or, because, because of the reason because, you said for sure. Okay, for like because they're I'm saying, the ones I'm saying, saying that they they don't risk dehumanization as easily as trans debaters. Yes, but they achieve it almost every show I do. And they achieve being dehumanized almost every show I do because the, the fact of the matter is if you look at a Dylan Burns live chat, Dylan, now CTV has had some just abysmal takes recently. CTV has done some cringe shit, right? Do you think that he achieved like an increase in his humanization through your platforming of him? Or do you think he achieved a decrease, right? A as a whole, you know, on the, on the, you know, for the majority of his career, would you, I would say that you humanize that motherfucker. And that motherfucker is a, has weird segregationist takes, has, you know, transphobic takes. Like you humanized something really ugly and made it this cute, like uncle submarine commander, dude, that like, you know, it's just like, I don't know, you, you Joe Biden CTV somehow. I think that's really dangerous, right? As bad as Stardust, you know, um, humanizing Haas or um, Richard Spencer, right? It's, or maybe not as bad as Richard Spencer, uh, as bad as Haas, at least. If you look at Dylan Burns comment sections on one of these videos, the people getting flamed overwhelmingly without the large amount of the time are not gonna be left-wingers. They're not gonna be trans people. It's not going to be the people who are who are making the left-wing arguments. It's usually gonna be the right-wingers, right? It's usually gonna be the right-wingers who are getting the most flamed or getting the most dunked on or getting the most disrespect. In fact, there's been many right-wingers who, who completely have like discounted me and don't come on my show anymore because they didn't get enough respect from my community. Um, a, a big obvious case of this. And I, I think they're idiots, actually, because right wingers also have the advantage of just simply getting clout from negative attention. Negative attention to them does not necessarily mean negative existence, whereas the exact opposite seems to be true for a lot of trans streamers in this in this space. I am going to point out uh, one. Chat. I'm starting to think that Dylan Burns vastly underestimated who he was up against here. What do you think, chat? Do you think that Dylan, do you think Dylan's getting a little nervous? Do you think his palms are sweating? Do you think he's he's thinking about that mom's spaghetti right now? No, I, I really can't point out names because I know that there's going to be, like, they're going to be targeted after this. Not because of you, I'm just saying, just because that's the nature of this space. And when I say the nature of the space, I also have to point out that, like, that 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 is the privilege that I'm talking about where, uh, like I have a lot more to lose even I feel personally from the negative attention because people will use that against me forever Whereas like these people that you're bringing on Dylan you had your fucked up stand like sorry I didn't want I want to say it that way. Okay like I'm not gonna assert that Zonia was giving like marching orders, right? I don't know that I don't want to make that assertion, right? I don't have any evidence to, to prove that Dylan himself directly was like, hey, Zonia, go and do this, this, and this, right? Um, but Dylan, as a result of your stochastic fucking, you know, your, as a, as a result of the, you know, stochastic um, violence of your rhetoric against me, I got harassed for over a year by some really messed up people. Samantha, Neo Morai Zonia, like that is a trifecta of just like monsters, right? Just absolute fucking monsters, just obsessive fucking monsters. And Dylan, the only reason they were doing it is because they thought they could get something from you. If you let people know that harassment, that like spying was not going to be rewarded, I think they might have acted differently. Dylan, you. In, in a large part, like, you know, you, whether you realize it or not, 
Like you did create this problem, right? And I want to make that distinct, right? That I'm not accusing Dylan of giving marching orders. I don't think he did. I don't think he would. I don't think he's like, you know, this this guy that wakes up and like wants to do something transphobic. I don't think he's consciously transphobic. I think it's all fucking brain worms with Dylan, right? It's all unconscious stuff, right? But that unconscious stuff hurts just as bad. In fact, sometimes worse, right? Because you that's unchecked. At least with conscious stuff, you could you could you might be able to come to terms with it. And be like, okay, you know, that was kind of that was kind of fucked up. That was kind of racist. You might get some social pressure against you, right? If you out and out, you know, act racist, right? Palm spaghetti. What's with the weird camera angle? I have no idea. Yeah, you're right. It looks like it's coming from his lap. It looks like he's got the camera like in his lap or something. Uh, Dylan knows whatever remained of his trans audience will agree with him anyway. Uh, most people only realize how bad Dylan is after he screwed over them over or uh, somebody they support. Dylan isn't his normal streaming in his normal sprint. Oh, because of the uh, he's doing uh, journalism profiteering from war in Ukraine. That was chat. They hoard it. And that was chat. they're probably the ones who keep coming on because they know that there's actually no difference between being told that they're right and getting reach or being told that they're wrong, sorry, and getting reach. I, I guess like you, the thing is a lot of people get reach on our show, but don't succeed the same way other people do. Um, and I can say like a lot of them, Christian Watson um, uh, and uh, Ender Dax, these people like didn't appreciate the type of the way my community behaved towards them. They thought it was too aggressive, too mean, too dismissive. And you can say that that's dumb or not because they, oh, they appreciate the negative attention, but like people being insulted or Chad is like always morally or Nazi scum or stuff like that, they're still gonna like receive that. Wait, like, wait, didn't Internax literally call himself a Nazbol? Extremely negative manner and being labeled in those ways aren't necessarily always helpful to you. There's a lot of people on my show, there's a lot of right-wingers on my show who have never really grown from Hippy Dippy or have only slightly grown from Hippy Dippy, but have helped by coming onto my show, left-wingers gain a lot of attention and, and uh, access to an audience. Demon Mama is somebody who grew a lot from Hippy Dippy. Not that I made her or anything, but she grew a lot from Hippy Dippy. There are a lot of other people like Heem who grew a lot from Hippy Dippy. There's a lot of left-wingers who grew from Hippy Dippy. I can name a lot more left-wingers who grew from Hippy Dippy and grew their audiences from Hippy Dippy than I can right-wingers. In fact, um, I can't. Motherfucker CTV, Rob Nor. These are people that would be virtually nowhere if it wasn't for Dylan Burns. Let me tell you about the the the, the deal with Dylan and right wingers. All right, early on. There were some people that would come on Dylan's uh, stream and actually get him in trouble, like actually, you know, TOS or, you know, do something that made him worry he was going to get banned or something like that. He didn't want that. And that's understandable, right? You can't you can't have that. You can't deal with that. Right. His solution was to grow, was to cultivate a right wing ecosystem where there was none. The right had largely just kind of like, you know, either TOS out or, or just like quit Twitch. Right. And so he had to make CTV's career. That guy, like, seriously, look at CTV and tell me that he would be anywhere without Dylan Burns' help. He was absolutely made by Dylan, and he's one of Dylan's, he seems to be a friend of Dylan's, right? This, this is the guy that made the, the swastika out of pride flags. That, that's that scumbag, the guy that said that maybe uh, black people were better off under segregation. That piece of shit, yeah. Yeah, you enabled that shit, Dylan. Really neat. I can't even put the amount of right wingers who grew from hippy dippy really on like one like I, I could count them all on one hand, and I think their their names are CTV, and that and like that's it really. Maybe Rob, but not really even. I would say Rob got his audience on his. It, it's hard for me to quantify, and I am speaking in a way where this is my perception. Like I, I didn't come in here expecting to be totally right. I, I figured some of these were weak points. Uh, the other side of this though is not necessarily like you know are, are people recognizing transphobia because yes they are that's that's not an issue the question is are they recognizing cis normativity and misogyny against trans people when they're being harassed in your space as a result of being on the same panel as another person who is not only reactionary but cultivates these kind of spaces i think the answer is sadly no and i think being vigilant of these things 
and recognizing when certain people's communities are backhandedly harmful is incredibly important and part of listening to trans people, even if you don't see it firsthand, because that's the biggest problem. A lot of violence against trans people in these spaces has become subversive for the reasons that you're stating and because they and because a lot of people feel complacent with like oh well I've, I've stopped misgendering I've, I've stopped uh you know personal yeah attacks. I know these are low now bars these are worry. I was well, gonna say no, now people could just be back yeah good point nine tails these are really low bars and it's it's sure, people love it, those do they still love car control, rants it's That's the same thing that Minnesota Mike does. Why don't you bring Minnesota Mike on? That affects us Actually, Minnesota Mike's kind of no matter where we go, kind of fashy. Never mind, bad idea. Spaces. Just saying one thing wrong after actually embarrassing somebody on an issue that matters, and after that, it's just nonstop hostility from that entire community. Not from everybody. In the community. This is what I'm saying. Like nothing I'm saying relies on absolutes. It's just more consideration. Now you did a ways back ask, say like, oh, well, you want me to have more small trans streamers on? I don't think it's just that. I think like you have, you have to both recognize that you occupy a space right now that could be used for something other than entertainment purposes, but for actual like trans advocacy for starters. Now I'm not saying it ends there. I'm just saying that if, when it comes to when it, when it comes to us recognizing what your space represents to us, it's a space where the rhetoric about us gets rehashed oh, shit. and rehashed and never actually moves forward. I'm gonna stick with that. I wanna mention something really quick and I'm gonna let Nine Tails go on, okay? Um, if you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. Those are the ways that you signal that you like what you're seeing and that's what gives YouTube the cue to bring more people into the audience, right? So if you want to help me grow, if you want to help more people uh, hear this, if you want to help more people develop a resistance against this garbage that the debate bros are peddling, uh, you know, those those are things that you can do to really um, help me out. I also think they're the new TMZ, basically. That, like I said, it's a space where this backhanded harassment can proliferate and we're exposed to it. But through the, uh, through the lens of transphobia only being transphobia and nothing more, then it become then like this stuff does proliferate and that's I think that's the, probably the most common complaint I've heard from other trans people about your space because uh, I've never been on your back. You know, back it's backhanded harassment. You say is the not, the not from you, not from you, from the people who are on the new panels. Okay, so I. So it'd be their community. So it's not my community that's the problem. It's the people's. I've, I've seen your on. community be very hostile, but uh, I'm reluctant to go 100% uh, on that. I think it's way more of a concern, um, reactionary. Okay, so I want to speak to this. Were there some problematic, um, you know, takes in Dylan's community? Sure, sure. Um, I don't blame. Dylan's community for the Zonias, the the Neos, the Samantha Bananas, the people that really let it out of, get out of hand, right? The the obsessive haters, right? Um, I I don't I don't think that that's a typical Dylan Burns fan. There I said it. Okay, so I just want to make that really clear. Um, it's I don't have like um, I, I have disagreements with a majority of Dylan's audience. Um, I don't think that the majority of Dylan's audience are, are doing like hate raids on people and shit like that. But when you do this stochastic rhetoric, you, you do this rhetoric that prompts stochastic, you know, violence, that's what you get. You enable a Zonia, you enable a Samantha, you enable a Neo Mori to say that she wants to move to my fucking state so she can vote against public housing to make it more likely for me to become homeless. That's the kind of fucking bullshit that you enable. And and I say that with a caveat, right? Because I remember D Neo having some yikes takes about Dylan too. Um, Dylan's been homeless, right? You know, D Dylan, Dylan, you know, it has has this experience, right? And like the way that Neo like belittled um, Dylan's homelessness was just disgusting. She's a disgusting person. Samantha Banana is a disgusting person. Zonia is a disgusting person. All these people need help. Instead, Dylan, instead, they're occupied with harassing people like me and making it harder for us to get our voice out and showing an example of what happens to you, what kind of target you'll paint on your back if you actually stand up for trans people. Like these are three trans people that are so, so hard, lean so hard into assimilationism that they'll actually attack their own, right? 
So, you know, just, just think about that, right? I don't blame you for that. I don't think it's all of your community. I don't think that you wanted that to happen, but it did, right? And it started with your words, okay? So just, just keep that in mind. Something more productive, like say, coming on a podcast. Oh my God, that's coming up. Speaking of which, chat, I'm going to be on Alphabet Mafia, um, the podcast, uh, pretty soon. And I've already listened to one episode. It got really excited. I learned a lot about queer history. I learned where gay bars came from. I never thought about that, right? I never thought like, hey, where was the first gay bar? When did that start? I was just like, no, there's there's like always gay bars. I mean, no, no, it's got a history to it. It's got it's and it's really interesting history. Um, you can learn about that kind of stuff and more. Um, and 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 have fun doing it. It's not just dry. You're not just like cramming history into your ears. It's entertaining. It's fun. It's uh, it's 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 funny, right? It's 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 good shit. And so I'd highly suggest that you go check that out even before I go on their stream, but definitely check it out when I am on their, uh, on their podcast, which I think is coming up either the 23rd or the 29th sometime around, uh, the, so one of those two weeks, um, it's what we're looking at right now. So I'm really excited about that. Cause, um, those are some good people. Um, that's, uh, you know, um, I love a good podcast. Like, I love the vibe of a good podcast. It, it feels really good to participate in something like that. I'm looking forward to it a lot. Really reactionary spaces. I don't really think my commu community is really that much of, um, I don't, I think my community is, is vicious, but I, I don't think like attacks on identity. Helen, it only takes one or two really messed up people. And you had three, you had three jump on me. Okay. At least or attacks about identity is something that my community really but practices. It's not attacks about identity. Amount. Like I said, like that's the shallow perspective of how this stuff works. So like, this, this, so like, what do you mean exactly? Like harass, because when you say, talk about like harassing trans people, oh. right? How would my community then harass a trans person? Like how, how is it done that or how does it do that? It's, it's a general. Like I said, I don't blame this whole community. Treats the trans person. I, I, the points are less. I blame the individuals who did their harassment, and I blame him for for stoking that stochast for stoking that stochasm. I don't know what I'm saying, chat. You know what I'm saying? For for smoking that stogie of stochastic violence, right? Valuable than they are, and forms rhetorics against them that doesn't actually like rely on what truly happened because since their voices are minimized and confined to the left a lot of the time a lot of people can say things that proliferate regardless of what we want to be true and so, again i i so wish the I problem is they, examples but they i can't disagree. bring it up without knowing that something will start because this is how okay. it generally this is this is what happens and then they say i'm getting pushed out of this space i'm going to leave now and they never appear on your panel again Okay, so I guess like when it comes to the idea that there's people in my community that might that it, it sounds like you're saying they disagree with the trans person's point, but their disagreements are not valid, and they're trying to. Uh, uh, they're rooted in dehumanizing the other person and not giving them an actual argument. Dehumanizing the other person. If somebody dehumanizes another person just to dehumanize them because they're trans or in any way related to, 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 to really any dehumanization. Is she period. drinking a beer? Then that usually would be muted. With Chat, is Ninetales drinking while doing this? That's kind of impressive, actually. The ban. Or she's really, she's she's on. She's she's very much on right now. Or at least some form of punishment. Um, it, like, the like we'll allow, like, certain insults. Like, you're fucking I mean, more. listen, to be honest, this is the same shit we get from Bosch's community, from Xander Hall's community, from Destiny's community. Hey, tell us who the, uh, tell us who the, uh, harassers are, and we'll ban them. Okay. Okay, uh, uh, could you please ban, uh, Irene is, oh, so I'm sorry, Gyrene is a AGP diaper butt. Could you, could you please ban diaper pill from, you know, I think it's shit like that. Yeah, that, you, you think that's the person in your community? Or do you think that that is a hate account made up during a hate raid that if I say, could you ban this person? You're going to tell me, I'm sorry, we don't have AGP diaper butt in our community. That's not a real, that's not a real thing. That doesn't exist. That's not, that's not right. Or on or stuff like that. But that like, it's thrown at everybody across the board. Uh, but if there's anything that we think is related to them being trans, it'll usually result in a timeout and then they'll follow with a ban. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm saying that these things that so, can be universal. Again, with. that is useless against somebody that's hiding behind alts, right? Which is how this this harassment goes on, right? This is how this shit goes on in Twitch. It's hate raids. Get applied. Get disproportionately applied in a way that actually reflects misogyny to trans to trans people when they have valid points. And that is. So and, so and, what you're saying just, is this not, like veiled not, misogyny when they disagree with the trans and plus and plus the attack with them. Dylan, you're being such a I'm sorry, but you're kind of being a shitter here. Like right, I'm I'm not trying to get like um ad homie with you or anything. I, I'm not like I said, I'm not mad, but like that that's shitty. Person's more specific. That's shitty. The, the important thing. There's not. I guess if the idea is that some of my viewers could be. Uh, in in their souls or like in parts of them, misogynistic or transphobic, and they'll they're not making transphobic arguments or saying transphobic things when they disagree with the trans person um, uh, about their about an issue that is important. That it could be under the guise of transphobia or or misogyny. Well, again, this is this. Like, is there's no too, way to account for this. Getting too atomized. I'm talking more in like a general way. I don't think he knew who he was the debating. Itself I don't think he understood. When this is happening, when I think he never saw it coming. Happening. People say, well, I don't recognize it. And then they get pushed away from the spaces and feel excluded by their treatment, not just from your community, which I would imagine is not like usually as bad, but not also the type to exactly like fight off uh, people in the way that you're saying or in the way that we're demanding. Uh, whereas on the other hand, like it's it's more so from reactionary communities that particularly are bad for going behind the scenes to get back at people who do dehumanize or embarrass them, I should say, on your panel. So, so the Ooh. the main issue seems to be the reactionary Ooh. communities that are coming in then. Oh, oh wait, so it's not my fault at all, Dylan. Listen, your rhetoric has something to do with that, okay? That's what we're saying. When you dehumanize trans people with your rhetoric, you got some culpability, right? Now, like I said, I'm not accusing you of fucking giving marching orders. I don't think you did that. I don't think you would do that. I don't think you're that, like some kind of horrible fucking foaming in the mouth of transphobe that wakes up every day singing, let's fuck over trans people, you know? I don't think you're like that at all, okay? But I think it happens anyway, because you fucking, you're so fragile, you lose it. And, and that dehumanization, like, has consequences for us, right? People like Zonia, who are, like, hopeless stands of yours, will take that shit way too far, okay? You gotta know that there's some messed up people out there, right? There's some neo Morais out there. There's some Samantha Bananas out there that are gonna take this shit way too far. You gotta know that. Might go off and do. Like, yeah. statistically speaking, it's inevitable, okay? So, uh, now, you can you prevent that 100% of the time? No. Are you responsible for that 100% of the time? No. But you can minimize that by, like, checking your fucking fragility. And that's all we're really asking. That's all I was asking you, right? Recognize that when you bring Rob Noron to fucking machine gun transphobic brainworms into his audience, right? I gotta say something. If I don't say something, I'm failing my community, right? I'm not the streamer that they need in that case, right? I'm not the streamer that they're looking for. I've lied to them, okay? I don't want to be a liar, Dylan. All I did was speak the truth to you, and you couldn't fucking handle the truth, Dylan. You could not. It's typically the fact that a trans person can't get onto the, your panel without at some point down the line facing some sort of harassment by exposing themselves because you bring on people who on the surface don't say transphobic things but their communities are incredibly weaponized mm -hmm. against trans people yeah i would say that like right-wing voices like on twitch that i've interacted with there are definitely instances where there are members with their community that are very toxic towards just queer people in general or just minority groups in general and i have uh, you know, i've seen people like afterwards like use certain like slurs directed at me or they have gone in and just said the most disgusting things about uh for example i'm in ukraine right now so like Dylan, try people like hate rating you accusing you of hate rating yourself and going around trying to isolate you from everyone okay i know you felt some of this right i've seen people be transphobic to you that's absolutely true right 
There were, there were, I've definitely seen those debates where people, where people were like that. And I'm sure more than just those people have like, have like, you know, you know, had transphobic, or sorry, transphobic, I'm sorry, homophobic, uh, in the case of Dylan here, um, intentions, right? Um, but I don't think you realize how far it can go. I don't, I don't think you realize how far, like, a messed up person like this is gonna take things, right? With your cue, with you dehumanizing me, that is all it takes. That is all it takes to, like, you know, unleash the um the dogs of war for these people right and some of these people have connections to some really ugly websites right and once that starts to happen all bets are off dylan if you had to deal with the fucking threats of violation of my consent okay and of an and of to to unalive me i i think you might feel differently okay Ukrainians, for example, hey, what's up, little cookie? like go after them, like oh, they're just Western gay lap dogs for the like homo. Why can't anyone ever admit they're wrong? Dominance paradigm. That's why. West or whatever, and like the the thing is, anytime you inter interact with the right, uh, that's gonna be a risk. That yeah, I, I vibe with that, Trotsky. I vibe with that. that. Comes with that, and the best thing you can do is when they engage in that behavior in your chats and your communities is you ban them and, and purge them, but that is 100% like a risk that just comes with engaging with people who you um, who you disagree with of, of a right-wing persuasion. I guess the, the I guess key, again, the the key time, is... Again, you don't I mean, understand I, I, how I bad it gets. The end of your sentence. Uh, I, 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 I'm tending to let you and Mr. Geek finish whenever you speak, so please. The, the key is for me, I guess, like deciding where you're going to put the line in the sand uh, when it comes to who you bring on and what communities they bring with them. Um, and how destructive they can be to just like having an inviting community overall. Well, I, and I think it's more specifically like, like you have a power here. And by being kind of laissez-faire about it, uh, this is the result we've got. And so I think we are at a point where people who are real trans allies will say, well, trans people will feel pushed out because the onus isn't actually on them not to be harassed. So what are you going to actually do so trans people can feel included? Because while it, you can say it's just the way things are that this happens, uh, part of being actually like progressive and uh, fighting for emancipation is not accepting the way things are. Like I, I was going to uh, say, yeah, don't yeah. Accept appeals to normativity uh, if you accept that that the, you know how many times that's just the way it is has been used it's been used you know for, to excuse racism transphobia homophobia everything like misogyny right that's oh, that's just the way it is i'm sorry you're not gonna like you're not gonna get hired you know at, in this profession because it, it this profession is full of guys and they don't see you as their equal right yeah this happens like um don't understand how some cis gay guys don't have empathy for what trans people go through. We've all been through it. We should be the first people to step up for others being marginalized, especially given the misogyny and hate for gender nonconformity baked into homophobia. It's all connected to me. For yeah, for yeah, exactly, exactly. First they came for actual left, and so my question is for you: like, how is it invalid for someone like me to say? that you're actually working against the trans fight when you're when you're saying that like well this is the way things are it's inherently more violent towards trans people who have more to lose than it is against reactionaries who have the status quo to fall back on i don't see it as i am just accepting things as they are currently i it's more of an acknowledgement of the current political reality within the united states that the right wing in this country has a lot of transphobia and, so should a trans uh, ally it, protect trans people? Should a trans oh ally god. protect trans oh people? Oh my god! Oh my god! You get fucking interrupted one time, and you're not sorry. So and, and, I'm trying and to position, not to get hung up on details like that. You're absolutely but. certain that, despite the fact that you bring on <laughs> these reactionaries that leads to the harassment of trans people, and despite the fact that you have these standards where trick where other trans streamers can't make the cut. There's nothing you can do to actually uh, change the flow of this dynamic, which I'm trying to well, point out to you is working against trans people in this space right now. 
I guess for me, if I bring on trans people who are worse at debate, who are worse at presenting like good arguments, and are worse in dealing with these situations, but that's I'm only going to make the situation that. worse. That's, that's a character. Dylan, I hate to say this, but I'm going to question your perspective on this. I'm going to question your judgment on this. I'm not going to say that you're totally wrong, and I'm not going to say that there aren't trans people that might not be ready to compete in um, a forum like you know, like like a like a major panel, right? For whatever reason. Um, but I, I think that you're a little bit jaundiced here. L not jaundiced, you're a little bit you know, you're you're seeing things through a, like a slightly um biased lens, let's just say. But wait, but the I'm gonna stop you now just because I wanna explain. Well Ooh, but I don't want yes, you to stop me now because I'm yes. not done. Okay. I I I I think yeah, I should clarify because you did not get that right. Okay. Continue. I'm not saying to simply. Have <laughs> this is on such an imposition, dude. Do guys do this shit to you all the time? Like I've never seen you react like this. Streamers. I'm saying to have on good trans streamers, but also maybe less experienced streamers who have to grow. And more specifically, I think with the power that you hold, you can also be. Uh, you can also offer a lot of constructive criticism on how these streamers can be more entertaining and uh, work against the right wing better. But I, I like. I don't think that like rejecting the power of networking that you have here is actually the solution. I think it's only going to perpetuate we, the issue. We have built a system that no other show in our space has, which is the Hippie Tippie Recruitment Show, which is designed to do this, where you're supposed to go onto the smaller platform, learn how this how the system works, learn how to like we'll talk in front of an audience learn how these learn how the system works bow down kiss the right asses yeah i know how that works dylan i'm not playing that game okay i'm not playing that game i don't need to play that game dylan dylan i'm bigger than that game okay the bay panels work and then you once don't have you're a panel enough, big enough for me you're dylan good enough the main show then we're going to take you from that and put you on the main show. We've why developed don't you that system. Communicate with people though what they need to do because I've never gotten like what they need to do to improve, like and get I've onto never, the main show. I, I've even DM'd multiple people. It it is it is, I guess the main the main issue is we have I guess through all of our shows we have sixteen people on every week. We have eight people on the main show. We have eight people on the smaller show. That's sixteen people every week. Sixteen people just, every week. If you look at yeah, let's say I don't four think or five specific though, God, enough, though, for people to know what to do. So we're talking about sixty to like I guess that's like what thirty six to forty something character uh, like debate reviews every month. Like we honestly we just can't manage that much many like debate reviews like. If somebody like genuine also there's also another issue is we tried that and it went terribly we tried that originally with hippie dibby recruitment right, and we I got a ton of complaints when we actually did that sorry try what specifically you should hear when how ridiculous he sounds honest reviews hey, listen chat he might be in chat right now i mean that it did not end well he, he is pretty pr he, like, like i said he's pretty fragile offended they didn't like my honesty because i'm very blunt if somebody asked me why I wouldn't put them on the main show if I've seen them on recruitment, I will be very direct. Like, I mean, to be fair, Dylan, like... I don't want... No, no, let's not do that. Let's not do that. I'm not going to get into the... I'm not going to get into the... Like, let, like I'm not going to... I was tempted to give you some feedback about your own debate skills, uh, but that's probably not what is needed right now. Chad, I'm sure you could imagine where I was going with that, all right? Sometimes sometimes an emperor is naked and sometimes an emperor wears a bathrobe, right? Your arguments were not good. I don't think anybody was convinced or your mic quality is terrible. You're never getting or you don't know the subject that I brought you on the panel to talk about. Yeah. Animation without that mic or honestly, um, you don't uh, you think that you don't think that the confluence of um, of, of um, populism and you know, of, of right wing social um, takes and, and populist economics is is a upcoming and dangerous thing. Dylan, how fucking wrong were you on that? If you look back at your performance on my panel, I don't think I would have brought you back for the next week, right? I don't think I would have given you a positive. Okay, I said I wouldn't do it. I'm doing it. I'll shut up now. I'll shut up. Too slow, and you can't get the points out fast <laughs> enough, and so you took up way too much time when you were trying to get out a point. Or, if, if you or can like be irreverent, a, if you can be irreverent to the demands that trans people are making and bringing up about your panel, 
Why irreverent. can't you be irreverent? Just, just not care, like, uh, just not like, care. It's not that I don't care. Does if Dylan not know what concern, irreverent means? Garbage, Does right? motherfucker oh, right. not know what a fucking irreverent? This is your dude. This is your politics, dude. Twitch. Good job. Good job. You really picked a winner here. The motherfucker doesn't. Sorry. Damn it. Damn it. I'm trying not to be mean. I'm trying not to be mean. I can think that the concern is like. Like there's not like but how many t how many different people are gonna bring this up before it's not garbage? Well, uh, people have brought up period that I shouldn't have right wing people. I shouldn't platform people on period. I should not talk. No, no, about I, I, no, I, well, no, no. Is that what you th thought you were getting from me? I, I, I don't like. Now he has brought me up here, right? I, I don't think he's necessarily talking about me there, right? But just to be clear, um, I wasn't asking to get rid of the right wingers. I wasn't even asking to get rid of Rob Nor, which, you know, maybe is a reasonable request looking back on it, right? I was asking to stop the motherfucker from gish galloping. I was asking you to do your fucking job as a panel host instead of just like sitting there like a privileged shithead, like who can rest on his laurels. That's what I was asking you. I was challenging you to be better and you were too fragile to take that feedback, weren't you? Well, I know that's not what you're saying. That's not what you're saying, but that's what people say to me, right? Does that mean because they keep saying it that it's true? No, of course not. I'm not I'm, I'm not talking about repetition being truth. I'm talking about there is a consistent problem that trans people bring up. And I, I've talked to many of them personally and watched them go through this, not just in your space, but it's very common in the base spaces. Yeah, yeah, good point. And yeah, yeah. I, I will say this much. Uh, you could probably tone down the toxic masculinity in your presentation. I was pretty disappointed uh, about the thing. Damn. Cause, and I think that that does fuel uh, these over assertive uh, responses to trans people who speak out because it's it's this like I need to be like super aggressive and stuff like that when like you mean intro? Also... Yes. Yeah. What of what so, about what, what what went wrong there? I I, I think you kind of uh, I can say normalize, but uh, the fighting the, thing. You, you made that kind of approach to somebody look really strong and the thing is is like a lot of trans women when we've when we transition we, we we're not aggressive like that both before and after and so we get constantly hit with this and you say oh well that's just the way it is well yeah well that's that's going to be in its own right a gate uh, form of gatekeeping and if that's you know working against a certain group of people because of the nature of the approach then there's like, this needs to be addressed. Now, I don't know how much you actually need to address toxic masculinity in your community, because I don't know your community that well. I That, that made uh, me this, worried. That made me worried, I, is what I'm saying. I, I guess like for me, like- Oh, you know irreverent because of a religious trauma? I did that because it was fun. Right, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed. Like, look, I don't think that I'm not, I'm not trying to gatekeep people. It's just like for certain things, like you know, your 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 art is the art of the word and the rhetoric. Okay, you got You got to know a word like reverent, right? I, I don't know how you get by as a panel host without that. In that it's a pretty damn passage, useful tool. Right? When he acts so top gun. That's like that's I'm like super... that's like you hire like you know somebody to fix you know your house and they come over and you're like where's your hammer and they're like oh hammer i don't use i don't use a hammer i take the screwdriver and i bang the nails in like like no no you need a hammer you need a hammer for macho i i can like look at these soy boy leftists and then i take that performance that he puts on throw it back in his face make it real for a second and he can't do anything right that was the point of why i did the whole boxing thing with infrared right I did it because it was fun. Wait, and I did it. Did they actually to box? Kind of show that this Wait, person's faking it. Can, can somebody? They, they, I, I think they challenge. There was a challenge, right? But I don't. Am I right? They didn't actually box, right? There, there was no boxing match between. Because if there was a boxing match between Dylan and Infrared, I would be obliged to watch it. That this person isn't really the macho man that he pretends to be on the internet. Uh, I don't believe that it would Wait, be didn't smart for me Dylan to throw come away the idea of looking being like a bitch really too? aggressive in debates or, or using tactics against people like that when I know uh, it'll be effective because other people can't do it. That wasn't a debate though, Dylan. It was a debate and it descended into uh, something that wasn't a debate. It descended into it descended into his character and it showed him to have a weak character, right? It showed him to be somebody who pretends to be somebody right. he isn't. I'm not oh my god, like a naked emperor or something? 
in a bathrobe? Though, that was mine. Like an almost I naked emperor? Like <laughs> other people who idolize toxic masculinity, just out of the normativity of doing so, you know, also saw the same thing that I saw. And that's what I mean by like thinking about what kind of audiences you're attracting and what kind of uh, overlap you're creating because yeah, if trans people are like, you know, the, the, the way that you're networking us with these fashion... Infrared did back out. Okay, space, so so he did kind of show infrared up in that way. Uh, the way that you're networking us with these reactionaries in this space is very uh, violent towards us. Then, like, you... Well, like, what do you mean that's violent? When you say they're violent towards us, they, 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 like, obviously well, they're not making thre violence. threats on my show. It... Well, well, no, again, can't we like, just I'm, call, you're can we... finding things to your show, and that's the issue here. Well, I don't think anybody's ever been assaulted or stabbed or shot as a result of anything that's ever happened on my show. I don't... Dylan, somebody's been threatened with... Unconsensual sex and unaliving, Dylan. I'm telling you this from personal experience. Okay? So are you gonna wait till somebody ends up dead? Is that the only time you're gonna care? Dylan, when there's a body at your door? Please don't wait that long, Dylan. Please fix your shit. Think that, um, I, I wouldn't really file harassment or the violence. Harassment is bad, but I wouldn't file like harassing somebody in DMs or spamming, even like spamming slurs is You got violent. no fucking clue, would, do you? You got no clue under, like, what people are doing. You have no fucking clue, do you? You like that's why under hate speech or- Oh no, or, like, oh no. Like, it's not DMs, it's Dylan, not it's not fucking DMs. Hey, so this is the end of part one of the debate. Remember, there's gonna be two parts, so watch for that video coming out soon. Um, also, since you got to the end of it, obviously uh, you really like me. You maybe think about throwing me a membership that really helps me out, that helps me continue continue to stream that helps independent voices like myself stay on the platform because so often the tendency is that people like Dylan uh, push us out. So if you want to show your support, that's the way you do it. Become a member at whatever level you can afford. Remember, I'm not asking anybody to spend money that they don't have. Take care of you and yours first. But if you got extra money and you can throw it towards me, that helps me out immensely. Um, as always, thank you so much and uh, hit that like button if you haven't already and make sure to um, catch part two of this video.